The path integral formulation of quantum mechanics is a description of quantum theory which generalizes the action principle of classical mechanics. It replaces the classical notion of a single, unique trajectory for a system with a sum, or functional integral, over an infinity of possible trajectories to compute a quantum amplitude. The basic idea of the path integral formulation can be traced back to Norbert Wiener, who introduced the Wiener integral for solving problems in diffusion and Brownian motion. The idea was extended to the use of the Lagrangian in quantum mechanics by P. A. M. Dirac in his 1933 paper. The complete method was developed in 1948 by Richard Feynman. Some preliminaries were worked out earlier, in the course of his doctoral thesis work by John Archibald Wheeler. The original motivation stemmed from the desire to obtain a quantum mechanical formulation for the Wheeler-Feynman absorber theory using a Lagrangian. As a starting point, this formulation has proven crucial to the subsequent development of theoretical physics because it is manifestly symmetric between time and space. Unlike previous methods, the path integral allows a physicist to easily change coordinates between very different canonical descriptions of the same quantum system. The path integral also relates quantum in stochastic processes, and this provided the basis for the grand synthesis of the 1970s which unified quantum field theory with the statistical field theory of a fluctuating field near a second-order phase transition. The Schrödinger equation is a diffusion equation with an imaginary diffusion constant, and the path integral is an analytic continuation of a method for summing up all possible random walks. For this reason path integrals were used in the study of Brownian motion and diffusion a while before they were introduced in quantum mechanics. Quantum Action Principle In quantum mechanics, as in classical mechanics, the Hamiltonian is the generator of time translations. For states with a definite energy, this is a statement of the de Broglie relation between frequency and energy, and the general relation is consistent with that plus the superposition principle. But the Hamiltonian in classical mechanics is derived from a Lagrangian, which is a more fundamental quantity relative to special relativity. The Hamiltonian tells you how to march forward in time, but the time is different in different reference frames. So the Hamiltonian is different in different frames, and this type of symmetry is not apparent in the original formulation of quantum mechanics. The Hamiltonian is a function of the position and momentum at one time, and it tells you the position and momentum a little later. The Lagrangian is a function of the position now and the position a little later. The relation between the two is by a Legendre transform, and the condition that determines the classical equations of motion is that the action is an extremum. In quantum mechanics, the Legendre transform is hard to interpret, because the motion is not over a definite trajectory. So what does the Legendre transform mean? In classical mechanics, with discretization in time, and where the partial derivative with respect to holds Q fixed, the inverse Legendre transform is, where in the partial derivative now is with respect to P at fixed Q. In quantum mechanics, the state is a superposition of different states with different values of Q, or different values of P and the quantities P and Q can be interpreted as non-commuting operators. The operator P is only definite on states that are indefinite with respect to Q. So consider two states separated in time and act with the operator corresponding to the Lagrangian. If the multiplications implicit in this formula are reinterpreted as matrix multiplications, what does this mean? It can be given a meaning as follows. The first factor is if this is interpreted as doing a matrix multiplication, the sum over all states integrates over all Q, and so it takes the Fourier transform in Q to change basis to P. That is the action on the Hilbert space, change basis to P at time T. Next comes, or evolve an infinitesimal time into the future. Finally, the last factor in this interpretation is which means change basis back to Q at a later time. This is not very different from just ordinary time evolution. 
The H factor contains all the dynamical information, it pushes the state forward in time. The first part and the last part are just doing Fourier transforms to change to a pure Q basis from an intermediate P basis. Another way of saying this is that since the Hamiltonian is naturally a function of P and Q, exponentiating this quantity and changing basis from P to Q at each step allows the matrix element of H to be expressed as a simple function along each path. This function is the quantum analog of the classical action. This observation is due to Paul Dirac. We see that the integrand in must be of the form EIF, H where F is a function of quart, Q1, Q2, Qm quart, which remains finite as H tends to zero. Let us now picture one of the intermediate Qs, say Qk, as varying continuously while the other ones are fixed. Owing to the smallness of H, we shall then in general have F, H varying extremely rapidly. This means that EIF, H will vary periodically with a very high frequency about the value zero, as a result of which its integral will be practically zero. The only important part in the domain of integration of QK is thus that for which a comparatively large variation in QK produces only a very small variation in F. This part is the neighborhood of a point for which F is stationary with respect to small variations in QK. We can apply this argument to each of the variables of integration, dot and obtain the result that the only important part in the domain of integration is that for which F is stationary for small variations in all intermediate QS. We see that F has for its classical analog TTL dt, which is just the action function which classical mechanics requires to be stationary for small variations in all the intermediate QS. This shows the way in which equation goes over into classical results when H becomes extremely small. Dirac op. CIT. 69 Dirac further noted that one could square the time evolution operator in the S representation and this gives the time evolution operator between time t and time t plus 2 epsilon, while in the H representation the quantity that is being summed over the intermediate states is an obscure matrix element. In the S representation it is reinterpreted as a quantity associated to the path. In the limit that one takes a large power of this operator, one reconstructs the full quantum evolution between two states, the early one with a fixed value of Q and the later one with a fixed value of Q. The result is a sum over paths with a phase which is the quantum action. Crucially, Dirac identified in this paper the deep quantum mechanical reason for the principle of least action controlling the classical limit. Feynman's interpretation. Dirac's work did not provide a precise prescription to calculate the sum over paths, and he did not show that one could recover the Schrödinger equation or the canonical commutation relations from this rule. This was done by Feynman. Feynman showed that Dirac's quantum action was for most cases of interest, simply equal to the classical action, appropriately discretized. This means that the classical action is the phase acquired by quantum evolution between two fixed endpoints. He proposed to recover all of quantum mechanics from the following postulates. The probability for an event is given by the modulus length squared of a complex number called the probability amplitude. The probability amplitude is given by adding together the contributions of all paths in configuration space. The contribution of a path is proportional to where s is the action given by the time integral of the Lagrangian along the path. In order to find the overall probability amplitude for a given process then, one adds up, or integrates, the amplitude of postulate 3 over the space of all possible paths of the system in between the initial and final states, including those that are absurd by classical standards. In calculating the amplitude for a single particle to go from one place to another in a given time, it is correct to include paths in which the particle describes elaborate curlicues, curves in which the particle shoots off into outer space and flies back again, and so forth. The path integral assigns to all these amplitudes equal weight but varying phase, or argument of the complex number.
Contributions from paths wildly different from the classical trajectory may be suppressed by interference. Feynman showed that this formulation of quantum mechanics is equivalent to the canonical approach to quantum mechanics when the Hamiltonian is at most quadratic in the momentum. An amplitude computed according to Feynman's principles will also obey the Schrödinger equation for the Hamiltonian corresponding to the given action. The path integral formulation of quantum field theory represents the transition amplitude as a weighted sum of all possible histories of the system, from the initial to the final state. A Feynman diagram is a graphical representation of a perturbative contribution to the transition amplitude.